In a big win for the Modi government, the Supreme Court today upheld the abrogation of Article 370. I'm Barkhadat, you with the Mojo story. Our continued coverage of the ramifications of this big verdict today from the Supreme Court continues. A constitutional bench headed by the Chief Justice of India, Dhananjay Chandrachud, has ruled unanimously that the abrogation of 370, a contentious decision taken by the Modi government, is legally and constitutionally sound. The judgment has argued that Article 370 is a temporary and transitory provision of the Constitution. The petitioners had argued that ever since the Jammu and Kashmir Constituent Assembly was dissolved in 1957, Article 370 came to be a permanent feature of the Constitution. The Supreme Court did not agree. One of the judges, Justice Sanjay Kohl, asked for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission that would look into quote-unquote violations by both state and non-state actors. But whether this individual judgment will be binding, we do not know. Otherwise, the verdict held that the consent of the State Legislative Assembly was not required before the abrogation of 370. To talk about this judgment, and its legal observations. We're joined now by a very special newsmaker, India's top jurist and constitutional expert, Fali Nariman. Mr. Nariman, it's always a pleasure and an honor to be speaking with you. Uh, what did you make of this verdict that has come unanimously, sir, from the Supreme Court? Uh, let me make it very clear that as a practicing advocate, at least an advocate who was practicing before I reached 94 years of age, the, it, it is not uh, my job to say whether the judgment is correct or incorrect for the simple reason that the Constitution says that whatever law is declared by the Supreme Court is binding on every person in the country. That includes all of us as well. So therefore, I can only tell you what I believed was the legal position before the judgment. And I'm not concerned with how, what it was argued. I, I was not present when anything was argued in the court. The, my own view was, and I may be right, I may be wrong, that say, Article 370, whether temporary or not temporary, that's what the marginal note says. The, the main section doesn't say so. The is a provision of the Constitution. And Article 368, which is the amendment provision, expressly says that any provision of the Constitution may be amended by the Parliament with the requisite majority. And if that is not done, then, and if it is done by a notification, that, in my view, would, would be totally invalid. That was my view. Therefore, I don't know whether this point was taken, not taken, but whatever it was, I only give you what I believe should have been the correct position. So if Number I can, one, if I can understand, if I may interrupt only to understand that further, do you believe the manner in which the abrogation took place uh, later uh, upheld by parliament was legally sound? It's not upheld by Parliament. What is the what is no 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 no? Please, I, that's not my point. I'm saying that 370 was in the Constitution. It was legally passed. I have no no difficulty about it. My point is only this: that if you wish to abrogate a provision of the Constitution after it is inserted in the Constitution, the only method known to the law under to the Constitution is by an amendment of the constitution. That is, it had to be go through parliament. It couldn't be right. done by a notification. That's the point. It couldn't be done by a presidential notification. That's all. That's the that's the main point. I don't know so, why so, that yeah. Yes, no, so yes. therefore, in your opinion, in your legal opinion, the way the abrogation took place was wrong. The way the the way the, way the, the amendment took place was wrong. Yes, of course, they had no power to amend. They amend any part of it, but much less did they have power. Did the president have power to amend Article 367? Who gave him that power? 
they added clause 4 to article 367 in order to get get rid of the proviso to article 370 clause 3 have you, I hope you have followed what clause it says, Article 370, Clause 3. It, it, it says provided that. Have you got that? Just see I, you, you don't have it. I'll read it to you. 370, yeah. Clause 3 expressly says. Where is this damn thing? Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir, please go ahead. We're listening to you. We're listening to you. Yes, yes. I just want to show you. Please, yes. 370. Yes. Clause 3. Like, yes, that's right. Clause 3 says that notwithstanding anything in the foregoing provisions of this article, the president may by public notification declare that this article shall cease to be operative or shall be operative only with such exceptions and modification and from such data as he may specify. Now, it is said that this is what the president did in 2019. <laughs> now, this could well have been done if you don't read the proviso. The proviso, it's proviso says, provided that the recommendation of the Constituent Assembly of the state referred to in clause 2, that is the state of Jammu and Kashmir, shall be necessary before the president issues such a notification. Now, no such uh, 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 recommendation was forthcoming for the simple reason that there was no constituent assembly of the state and there was no constitution of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. But that made it no, no clear, that uh, that made no difference. The proviso then should have been deleted by a constitutional amendment. But can, I, can I ask you can I, can I ask you a question? I yes. just pulled out my notes because yes. Parliament did approve the resolution to repeal Article 370 on the 6th of August 2019, right? So even if the initial decision was by a notification, Parliament did approve that resolution. And that is what I was trying to understand. Point, Marka. We are now concerned with constitutional law. And constitutional law requires it can only be by an amendment to the constitution in the manner mentioned in 368, with all the requisite voting, etc., etc. It can't be done because somebody approves of something. Assuming Parliament by a resolution approved of it, it has, yes. approval means by a resolution, not by a law. I hope I've made myself clear. So, in your opinion, the original abrogation in the manner that it was done was unconstitutional. Totally, totally. That was my view. I now stand corrected because of the judgment. And I have to, but that makes no difference. Therefore, as a lawyer, I, I can't say that the Supreme Court is wrong or the Supreme Court is right. I have, I have no authority to say either of them. But, no, but you no, clearly, no, but you, no, but you clearly no, no, disagree. No, no, I must tell you one thing. No lawyer has that authority. Please, you must, when you question all these lawyers who and ask them their opinion, no lawyer is empowered to say that this decision is wrong or that decision is right. He can only say what he was, what was his view before the decision came into existence. Whether it was argued or not argued, I am not concerned with. And but no one is concerned with. I want to understand something. One can disagree with the Supreme Court, right? One can one can disagree, accept a verdict, but not agree with it. Correct? Fuck it. In, in, in before you like that. But I, I, as a lawyer, I can't disagree. I'm sorry. I don't disagree with the Supreme Court judgment because I'm a lawyer. I have I have a, the, the discipline of a lawyer. Therefore, the and Article 141 says the law declared by the Supreme Court is binding on everybody. It's binding on you. It's binding on me. You may say I'm not a lawyer, so I don't care a damn. But I am a lawyer, so I do care a damn. So that, that's not that's not the point. The point is not whether it, whether the, the judgment is right or wrong. The point is what is according to somebody or somebody else the true interpretation. This is my interpretation. So I want to understand this properly. What you are saying is now that the Supreme Court verdict has come, you are not going to agree or disagree with it. But looking back at the original manner in which 
this change was brought, brought about, you do not believe it followed the procedure needed for a constitutional amendment. Absolutely correct. That, that's my point and that should be every advocate's point whom you can ask. I, I don't like advocates saying this decision is wrong. You have no business to say this decision is wrong. We have no business to say this because our, Article 141 bars us. It says everything declared by the Supreme Court is binding on everybody, on all courts in the country and everybody concerned, on you and me, etc. So we can express our view. That's all. It's only a view. But then, then this is my view. Therefore, and, and besides this, you see, the, 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 there was no power given to the president to issue any notification adding clause 4 to Article 367 also, because that was a very important. Just see 367. Where is 367? Sharma, come here. I say, yeah, instead of standing there. 367. 367. Yeah. 367. 367. 4. Yeah, bottom. 367. And they added 4. Now, that was, that was added by, not by an amendment. It was added by a presidential the notification, which nobody has empowered him to do. That One of the things, Mr. Nariman, if you one of the things the court said today was that the petitioners had not challenged the presidential the powers of the president and so therefore the court did not comment on it and you please ask all these gentlemen who are, and ladies who, who appeared for, for the petitioners i don't know whether it was challenged okay or let me understand this for you let me understand this you see i am giving you my view on this that's yes. all yes. I am not giving anybody else's view. So, so uh, carry on, carry on. You were wanting to make a different, you were looking for your papers so to make a point. 367 4 was added by that notification by the president. And it said, and it said, in for the purposes of this constitution, Article 367, there shall be added the following clause. Now, clause D to proviso in clause 3 of Article 370. The expression constituent assembly of the state <coughs> referred to in clause two shall read legislative assembly of the state. Now, this is nothing but an amendment of the constitution. How can he do it by a notification? He has to do it by a law. Under so basically, basically, a constitutional amendment cannot be done via a notification and a parliament approval unless it is passed absolutely. as a constitutional amendment. Absolutely, with the requisite majority. That's all. Now, I'm not on the politics of it. Whether they had the majority, they did not have the majority. I'm assuming if they had, they should have done it. If they didn't have it, it's bad luck. So <laughs> this all. change needed to be brought in as a constitu formal constitutional amendment. That's right. Or a uh, constitutional amendment should have deleted clause <coughs> 3 of Article 370. That's the other alternative. It could have done so that. either the law that required this amendment should have been changed or the law should have been passed as a constitutional amendment formally right am i understanding you correctly yeah yes yes correct correct that's that's my view that was my that was my view that's all i'm now bound by this view as anybody else is bound whoever argues with you or whom you interview they are all bound they may not accept it but that doesn't matter there's no question of accepting a judgment and not accepting a judgment. You may comment on it, but comment on it can only be in the form of saying that this was my view, not that it is my view. It can't be my view. It, so you're saying before the verdict, this was your view. Now that the verdict has come, you accept the verdict. I don't accept. I don't reject. Why should I reject or accept? I'm not there to accept or reject. What, what am, who am I? I'm just a citizen of the country. We have to accept. India's top lawyer, sir. Your India's I'm, top lawyer. I'm, it doesn't matter whether I'm a top lawyer or a bottom lawyer. It makes no difference. I'm a, I'm a lawyer. Yeah, so what? A lot of lawyers. Uh, the good lawyers, bad lawyers, uh, possible lawyers, all sorts of lawyers. There are good judges, bad judges, possible judges as well. So it makes no difference. Now, I want to ask you one other thing, and I'm going yeah. to summarize what you've just said. You have yeah. said that before this verdict, you believe that no law could have been amendment uh, amended in this manner via notification and a parliament approval. No, no, please, 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 if you don't mind. Yes. My point is, 
that the president of India did not have the necessary authority under the constitution to issue a notification as he did for the reason that under clause 3 of article 370 this power accrued to him only when only when give me 370 i, I can't see this damn 370 here only when only when only when the recommendation of the constituent assembly of the state referred to in clause 2 was there i was given because the proviso to clause 3 of 370 says it shall be necessary now if you say the constituent assembly of the state was not there the constitution was also not there <coughs> then what should have been done is delete the proviso and how is the proviso to three to be deleted only by a constitutional amendment <coughs> once so, again so either may i may i may i clarify for the last time yes. but yeah, i'm no, no, sorry okay. because i just yeah. I, I just want to be correct you're saying that the president did not have the authority to bring this change via a notification which was subsequently approved by parliament either this needed to be formally passed as a constitutional amendment which the bjp may have well had the numbers for or the, there should have been a change in the law that requires that constitutional amendment am i correct which change in which law no you're uh, saying no. that either there should have been a formal constitutional amendment not a change via notification from the president and approval from the parliament that was not enough Yes, that was right. insufficient. Yes, yes, correct. Because it, because because Article three sixty eight says any provision of the Constitution is to be amended in the manner mentioned in three sixty eight and in no other manner. And 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 these words, notwithstanding anything in this Constitution at the beginning of Article three seventy, which may be relied upon, gets watered down. Gets watered down because. If you see clause three, it says notwithstanding anything in the foregoing provisions of this article. So that, that but, notwithstanding is deleted virtually. But sir, I'm still confused because the Lok Sabha did pass the Jammu and Kashmir reorganization bill with 370 votes in favor and 70 against. So I'm confused because parliament did, both houses of parliament did give its approval formally to this bill. I'm, I'm not on the bill. The no, bill matter. has nothing the to do with it. Uh, the, 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 You're the, saying the what? original notification by the president was the problem. Yeah, no, 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 no. You just see, please, if you don't mind, uh, 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 yes. Barkha, uh, yes. uh, there, there is some confusion. You see, the, the power of the president under clause 3 of article 370, which is very strongly relied upon by the court, says that the president may, by public notification, declare this article shall cease to be operated. Got it? Yes. Therefore, the president did so declare. Right? Now, the president could only so declare by the recommendation. if the proviso was, uh, was applied. Namely, that the recommendation of the constituent assembly of the state shall be necessary before the president issued such a notice. Was it there? It wasn't there for the simple reason that there was no constituent assembly and there was no constitution of Jammu and Kashmir. Right. If that was so, then my point is that the proviso should have been first deleted. First. In order that the president acquired the power to issue a notification without complying with the proviso. That's my Understood. point. Understood. So, so you're saying that the yeah, way the presidential yeah, notification the came, bill. Yeah. yeah. It has so you're to saying do the reorganization bill. The reorganization bill only made this this state into a union territory. Whether that was right or wrong is a separate question. They, they use the presidential power to knock off this recommendation on this. Matter. You see, the president has only has the power ah. if if that is a recommendation of some other authority. So to now that authority to... was not existing. That we understand that. If that authority was not existing, you had to delete the proviso. 
Now, if you just read it with the without the proviso, if it's, if you delete this provision, it says president has full authority to declare the article shall cease to be operated. <laughs> then the so, pro president has full authority. This is honest. <laughs> You have only to delete the proviso, that's all. But that so, wasn't so deleted. You believe, that, uh, you believe the president did not have the authority to issue the notification and in as that first did. step, it as was unconstitutional. Did. As he did. As he did. To amend 267. 267. <laughs> because right. the, and secondly, secondly, the president also, with this power, ex an exercise of this power, uh -huh. Also, property mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. add a clause mm -hmm. in Article 367, which is Clause 4. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have got Clause 4, if you have uh, got a constitution, yes. book on the constitution, you'll find that in the footnote. It came on 5th of August, one day before. It came on 5th of August. So, amending <laughs> right. this book. Amending, yeah. Mm -hmm. To Article 367 shall be added the following clause. So, the purposes of this constitution as it applies. Now, this is not done by an amendment to the constitution. This is done again by a notification, which is again invalid. There is no such thing. Amending the constitution. It's an amendment to the constitution. How can you add a clause by a notification? Who authorizes you? So, at the very first step, the presidential notification is where you think the unconstitutionality lay. Yeah, absolutely correct. Absolutely. So the unconstitutionality is in the presidential notification, yes, according to you. And it, and it makes no difference whether this was a transitory provision or it was a temporary provision, because Article 368 says any provision, <laughs> which includes a temporary provision. So it makes no difference. What difference does it make? If it was added in the constitution, it has to be taken away by an amendment. You can take it away. Who's stopping you? If you have the requisite majority, take it away. So the proviso was a safety the recommendation of the But I, I don't that's know whether safety. this was argued, not argued. I'm not trying to be too clever. That's not my point. You ask me my opinion, I'm giving you what I believe yes. to be the correct position in law. Is okay. That, uh, I, I, I think I finally properly understood your position. But can I ask you one more question, which strikes me as confusing? The special status to Jammu and Kashmir is now gone. The Supreme Court has upheld that decision. But there are plenty of other parts of the country in Article 371 that continue to enjoy that special status. Is that not a contradiction in law? And that's all right. That's perfectly all right. I don't see anything wrong in that. Yeah, a lot of them. In fact, Sikkim, if you will, I don't know whether you know, Sikkim was added. There you'll find one of the sub articles says 371 blank, what Q or BP or something, which relates to Sikkim. Gives you special powers for Sikkim, which are not there for any other state. This whole chapter is like that. The whole temporary and but how do you, how do you legally explain taking away that proviso from one state but keeping it in others? Because that is that is a proviso which mentioned only it applicable to JNK because it speaks of the Constituent Assembly of JNK. <laughs> it has nothing to do with any other. There's no proviso applicable to every other. It's a, can uh, I, can, can I ask you, yeah, can yeah. I ask you in the end if you believe the last legal word has been spoken on this, given that the presidential notification was not part of today's verdict and the judges specifically said that this had not been challenged, the president's power to do this? No, no, no. It was the proclamation of emergency which was not challenged. That is what the court says. Sorry, it doesn't say so. Presidential rule. That is, that is the proclamation. You are mixing it up with the presidential proclamation, the governor's proclamation of emergency, yeah, of declaration. So, so that, that's a separate proclamation. That has nothing so do to do you, with this. So do you believe the last legal word on this has been spoken, Mr. Nariman? I, I don't know. That that you are better find out. I have no I just give you what my view is. That's all. At the moment, until this 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 is amended or set aside or whatever it is. By the court itself, we 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 have no authority to say this is wrong. That that's my view. I, I don't I don't accept this view. I can't go on television and say this judgment is wrong. So the judges the judges have to answer me. They have no business. They they say I don't give a damn for what Nariman says. <laughs>
I, I'm sure they give a damn for what you say, but if I may conclude this conversation by saying, you will not disagree with the verdict, but you yeah. will say that before this verdict, you believe that the procedure was not followed properly because it was done by a presidential notification. That's how the ball was set rolling. And it's a substantive procedure. It's not just procedural. It's a substantive provision. Remember, clause three is hedged in by the proviso. The, pre the president is not given the power himself. It is given only if, only if, it says shall be necessary, only if the constituent assembly of the state so decides. Now, there is no constituent assembly agreed. There is no constitution of Jammu Kashmir that's gone. Agreed. Therefore, this proviso has still remained. It's in the book. You have to remove it, therefore, first before you do anything else. So you remove the proviso, then everything falls into place. But of course, what you're saying is in contradiction to what the judge thought today. Big upon, yes, that's correct. That's correct. I don't know whether that was argued, not argued, etc. Yet you better ask the people who argued it. Are you disappointed but, with the verdict? No, I'm not. Why should I be disappointed? I am not a Kashmiri or a non-Kashmiri, etc. I'm, I'm a citizen of the country. I have to accept the verdict. That's that's my my point. As a as a lawyer, I have to accept it. I mean, that, that's a constitutional thing. It's, like, it's binding on you also, um, uh, 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 Balka. Article one forty one yes. expressly says so. It's binding on all of us. This is our constitution. So we can't we can't balk at it and say these judges are wrong, these judges are right, etc. etc. That's not our business. We have no authority to say that. So we but have to be really the, careful what we say. Yes, of course. We don't want to be in contempt of court, but I think what I'm you, you you're contempt. I'm not bothered about contempt. There's no contempt if I if I said I the judgment is wrong. There is no contempt. But I don't wish to say the judgment is wrong because I think that that's not part of the duty of a lawyer to say that that a judgment yes. is wrong. If the judge is advising people, other people who are non-lawyers on something that is concerned with the constitution, he has only to say that this was my view before the court decided this question. Can, can, I, can I say, at least correct me if I'm wrong, that yeah. you will not contest the verdict, but you do believe that the government made a mistake by going the route of the presidential notification yes, when it sought to bring this change? Yes, correct. Absolutely correct. I, because for, for two reasons, as I told you, that they had to first remove the proviso to Article 370, Clause 3, which they had not removed. And that could only be by a constitutional amendment. And the fact that this is a temporary provision and or not a temporary provision makes no difference because it says any provision. Article 368 says any provision can be deleted or added to or subtracted from, etc. That's all. Got it, Mr. Nariman. That's a lot to think about, even though the verdict is done and dusted. Uh, I think your words carry a lot of weight and it will generate a fair amount of interest. So thank you for talking to us. No, no, no. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Take care and thank you for explaining it so patiently to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. I was being a bit slow today. It was confusing. Thank you for explaining it so patiently. No, no, please. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thank you, sir. Mojo Story has always made a commitment to its viewers to go to where the story is. And as you can see here, we are at the epicenter of the Israel war on Gaza. We are right at the front line, about one mile from the Gaza Strip, as is the Israeli military gets ready with its tanks and its gunners to begin its final frontal assault that will take troops into Gaza. As we said, we are not like other organizations. We believe in giving you all sides of the story objectively and as much as possible from the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing here, covering the biggest global story today from the epicenter of the war zone. So please, we need your support. Support us, become a Mojo member, subscribe to us, spread the word and thank you for your support.